Hello guys, let's talk about why are angle sections used for steel trusses? Hello guys, let's talk about why are angle sections used for steel trusses? Reason 1. Angle sections are more resistant towards buckling than plate sections Reason 2. Reversibility of load acting on the truss It is quite possible for a truss to experience ever-changing loading in terms of both magnitude and directions. Under any given loading condition, a set of truss members remain in compression while others remain in tension. For one loading condition, a group of truss members remain loaded in compression while for a different loading condition, a different set of truss members remain loaded in compression. Although plate members perform very efficiently in tension but they perform poorly under compression as they buckle under insignificant load. Reason. Very small radius of gyration. So in place of plate members angle section members are used which can significantly resist buckling in comparison to their plate counterparts. Reason. Large radius of gyration. For the above two reasons. Angle sections are used in steel trusses so that when applied load reverses its direction and causes the tension members turn into compression members. The new set of compresses members don't fail by buckling and cause catastrophic failure of the structure. 1. They are the most commonly available shape that is rolled by the steel mills and are available in more sizes and thicknesses than any other shape too. They are preferred by the designers due to the eye shape being a more optimum shape for resisting bending moments. The material is arranged in an eye shape so that more area is available where stresses are more. Columns are subjected to bending moments in addition to axle forces and shear forces and bending moments are the most significant among the three. So any shape that is optimum for BM will be superior to other shapes 3. They offer a neat flat surface in two mutually perpendicular directions to facilitate connections of beams or bracing members 4. Bolting other members to a column is easier since both the nut side and bolt head side are accessible. In tubular hollow sections unless the bolt passes right through the entire cross section. The far side where the nut is to be located will not be available for tightening due to being inside the tube 5. You can fabricate a customized eye section by cutting three rectangular plates and assembling and welding them together to form an eye shape. So theoretically you can have any large size that the steel mills do not supply 6. You can optimize and reduce area where not required by tapering the depth or the flange width or thickness. You cannot taper a hollow section 7. The entire surface is accessible for painting, which is not the case for a tubular section. The inside of the tube is not accessible for painting. You can't even inspect. Mostly concrete slab is designed governing deflection criteria and not by shear in general. Because the loads on the slab is uniformly distributed and shear stress due to this distributed load are generally small. Hence shear reinforcement will not often required for such load. Even concrete has shear capacity to withstand such small shear stress. At the support shear is maximum for that alternate bent up provided in slab to withstand diagonal shear and prevents cracking. Also, the use of bent up bar permitted development of tensile strength also they are acted as shear reinforcement. However, in case of heavy concentrated load and in flat slab when shearing stresses exceed shear strength, then slab needs to be designed for shear and reinforcement are provided accordingly.